have motions? Okay, just one second. Um, second. Are there going to be motions? I didn't realize there was going to be a motion. I also, I also okay. Monetary motions, I'd like to see yeah. that. Right. Yeah, that's oh, okay. Okay, is it time? I guess it is time. Okay, this, um, I'd like to open the RMLD Board of Commissioners meeting. This meeting of the Ready Municipal Light Department Board of Commissioners is being broadcast at the RMLD's office at 230 Ash Street, Reading, Mass. Live broadcasts are available only in Reading due to technology constraints. This meeting is being videotaped for distribution to the community television stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. Uh, let me start uh, the meeting by reading our Code of Conduct. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the Chair on items on the official agenda as well as on items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions or comments from the public be directed to the Chair and that all parties, including members of the RMLD Board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the Board or responding to comments. Once recognized by the Chair, all persons addressing the Board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. It is the role of the Chair to maintain order in all public comment or ensuing discussion. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, I'd like to uh, start off by welcoming our newest member, Tom O'Rourke, to the uh, uh, Board of Commissioners. Tom, welcome. Good. Thank you, John. Good to have Good you here. You. Thank you very much. Excellent. And I'd also like to uh, welcome Dennis Kelly uh, from you. the CAB. Welcome, Dennis. Okay, good. So, um, so I think we can move right into the capital and operating budgets. Great. Thank you and good, e good evening. Uh, thank you for allowing oh, us. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. One more other thing. I'm, I have to note that um, we have a remote participation tonight from our Commissioner Talbot. Um, Commissioner Talbot, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good. We can hear you fine. That's great. Thank you. And the reason that uh, you're um, come calling in remotely is because of geographic distance. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, no Dave, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you for allowing us uh, to present the operating and capital budgets cohesively this evening. The RMLD annually files a DPU report which provides the outline and basis for all electric utility budgets. FERC accounting essentially divides electric budgets into operating, the 500 900 series numbers, and the capital, which is the 300 series numbers. Tonight, each division manager will first provide to you the highlights of their operating budget and then their capital outlay. It would be our intention going forward to present the budget in the same cohesive manner. The budget has been reformatted to tell a story via a six-year plan. What has happened, how we are doing, and what we plan to do in the future. The justifications to what we do are all for all intent and purposes are backed in large by engineering standards, science, and a, um, a sprinkle of politics. Our objective is straightforward. We want the decal on the side of our trucks that says reliable for generations to be true. To maintain that objective, a utility must have strategic plans in place that address the electric system, its power supply, and its employees, along with its financial health. These plans address efficiency, safety, and procedures to optimize reliability. And when formalized and implemented on a consistent basis, we will be true to our motto. The six-year plan will remain updated. The operating six-year financials focus on revenues and our statutory duty to cover all of our production costs. Our capital six-year plan focuses on reliability and the essential enterprise projects and appropriate funding, including the depreciation fund balances. One issue I would like to mention is the percent change that you see in your operating budget. I want to note that this is not reflective of a difference from the FY14 budget, rather a percent difference from what has been spent. So it can be a little bit confusing. I wanted to make that note. With that, I'll turn it on 
over to our Chief Financial Officer, Bob Fournier. Good evening. Uh, tonight up? we'll be presenting the uh, FY15 operating budget. Uh, I, I had I distributed a handout uh, prior to the meeting, and when we get to those sections, I'll let you know when to refer to them. Um, everybody received their their full uh, document like this here. Uh, tonight we're just going to deal with the summary section. We have uh, the individual divisions detail uh, as a reference, but we will not be going and discussing it uh, division by division. We're going to be looking at the summary section only. So turning to that section right now in the summary tab, if you turn to that, you'll be coming to see the six-year plan, uh, which basically shows what we're doing currently right now in the current year, which shows seven-month actual and what we're projecting out for the budget for the remaining five months of this fiscal year. Uh, the FY15 uh, operating budget, which we'll be presenting tonight, and then going out four more years uh, uh, to show the, 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 that picture. Uh, probably of, of note is the bottom line, the ROR percentage, which is the rate of return. Uh, by statute, we're allowed to make up to 8% of our net plant, and those percentages at the bottom of the page show what we're anticipating based on those revenue projections and expense projections for those upcoming years. So flipping over, uh, to page one, which shows the 2015 budget, 2014, seven months, five months, and then the FY13 actual. Uh, that's where I'll be, I'll be starting. But before I get to that page, if you look at the first page of the handout, the one that has, uh, it says operating budget draft one. And without oversimplifying the operating budget, what this page does is, is kind of at 30,000 feet, show you what's contained in this budget. So in FY15, we're projecting to have about $87 million in expenses. When you look at that, um, this business is a highly fixed cost business. When you look at your purchase power, base cost, fuel cost, what we uh, use for depreciation, our commitments to the towns, and uh, normal accounting uh, processes, which is the miscellaneous deduction for a loss and disposal, of the 87 million, 73 million of that is more or less fixed costs, which represents about 84% of the budget, which leaves about 16% or about 14 million of semi-variable costs, um, which, which entails the balance of the budget. And looking at some of those items, uh, the obvious ones, labor expense, uh, employee pensions and benefits stands out, um, overtime, our insurances, training, bad debt, all normal um, accounting activities uh, that take part during the year. And so that it doesn't become too cumbersome. Uh, you know, the 16% really is, is a, a fraction of, of, of the total budget there. So looking again back on and just another point of interest, as I said, we have the detail for all the divisions behind here. We're not a line item budget. Uh, so we do put uh, expense items as a line item to help clarify to the reader what constitutes that expense amount to give, them an, to give the reader an idea. Uh, but we're not a, line, not a line item budget. So this is our, our best uh, projection of what we think the upcoming fiscal year is going to bring for us. So on that page one that I alluded to a little earlier, uh, we're looking at the uh, FY15 budget, which we're, we're presenting tonight. We have the 2014 seven months actual, five months budget, and last year's FY13 actual. Uh, as each division manager comes up, uh, they'll be uh, explaining the main drivers, which makes up their uh, 2015 budget uh, to arrive at that 2.5 million net income. Please go ahead. Bob, could you just speak to the changes that we made prior to the CAB meeting? Um, okay, I was going to say that to the end. We can do it right now. Oh, okay. Just because it speaks to the $2.5 million. Okay. Um, if you look at the last page of the three-page handout I gave to you prior to the meeting, 
RMLD noticed some changes or adjustments that needed to be made from the 2.5 million that was presented in draft one. Um, the first two uh, was just a reclass on the capital from the capital labor uh, budget uh, to the operating budget, which was a decrease in that income of about fifteen thousand eight hundred dollars. Yours truly on the CAB side, uh, forty-five dollar adjustment. But we want to be as accurate as possible on that. Uh, the big ticket item was uh, the decrease in our tree trimming expense from uh, seven hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars to six hundred forty thousand dollars. So there will be a draft two. The draft two will represent a net income of two point six million, um, and that is what at the CAB meeting was. Uh, the CAB recommended uh, to approve that amount. It was their recommendation. So this is up to date with the CAB approval of the CAB is on board with this figure uh, that 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 draft to the 2.6 million and. Okay, great. So uh, we just kind of covered pages, uh, the summary on that page one. The rest is just detail of that page one. It just shows the breakout of the revenue and other expenses. But when it comes to the expense side, uh, the division managers will be addressing those as we go along. So the next section we're going to come to is a description of RMLD's power supply, which Jane will uh, make her presentation on. Uh, Bob, let me just ask, are there any uh, questions or on the on Bob's presentation? This first piece. Great, thank you. Thanks. Um, in the past, well, with uh, several new board members, um, one of the recommendations were that we list the different various projects that we have um, various unit entitlements of, with a little description of them. So I won't go through project by project, but this is just to give people a flair of what um, comprises the RMLD's power supply portfolio unless the board wants me to go through each project but no, I think we're we're fine probably on that it's a good description good write-up um, <clears throat> following the, the description section is a list of um, the purchase power expenses um, and they're broken down by project types as well as capacity transmission and energy uh, some of the contracts are long-term unit contracts that we get all different p uh, portions of um, and then some of them are just energy only contracts um, so if you go to the, the, the column in the middle with the CT and E denotation is capacity, transmission, and energy, and then the totals. Um, at the very bottom of the page, uh, for capacity, the capacity total is $16.3 million. The transmission is 12.556 for a total of 28.889 uh, for the fiscal year 15 budget. And fuel c is projected to come in at 36249 uh, that's with uh, current natural gas spot indices, and uh, when those actually come in, there will be discrepancies, but that's based on the market conditions at the time the budget was created. And these change over time, Jane, and obviously they do. it's a function Th this of... Is, this is our best. Um, usually we go out for an annual RFP, which looks like four years. Mm -hmm. This is the current projection based on the, the existing portfolio. Great. Are there any uh, questions, observations, comments? Please, um, if transmission should go up during the year, is there any response that the RML, RMLD makes? Yes. Uh, currently, uh, within our rate structure, we have a purchase power adjustment, and which looks at the forecasted transmission costs, and then it compares the actual transmission costs. So if there's uh, an increase midstream, uh, we're able to make adjust, uh, adjustments through the purchase power adjustment clause. Does that answer okay. your question? Thank you. We're at the end of Jane's uh, power supply um, memo. We look at another, another section called page one, which is what we see typically in our monthly financial. It says budget actual comparison summary schedule. And in that is the five divisions of the RMLD. And we'll start going through uh, the divisions with the division managers, and they'll uh, be addressing the, the, the key points uh, within their budget. Leading off for us will be Jane, Energy Service. Uh, uh, That's right, it has a new name now, doesn't it? Resources and Planning Division Manager, Director. Okay. Um, 
I'm responsible for the integrated resources and planning. Uh, within my uh, division, there's two primary focuses. One is the wholesale side, which is the power supply, which I just described, um, the total budget being $65 million of that. The other focus in my uh, group is the retail side and the, uh, with the efficiency programs as well as working with uh, our commercial uh, customers and our municipal towns. Um, and so uh, as an overview and in line with the strategic plan, uh, we're focusing on uh, the power supply, which uh, we, we try to maintain a competitive power supply so that we, we can maintain low rates. Um, and then we're working on programs to help our commercial customers uh, work efficiently, um, improve their programs, uh, so that the programs that we de uh, be uh, develop, they both benefit the, uh, the commercial customers and municipal customers and residential customers, as well as help the power supply in terms of focusing on peak demand reduction, mm -hmm. because those are the costs that really drive our, cap our capacity and transmission programs, uh, our ca capacity and transmission costs on the wholesale side. So we're integrating both the wholesale side along with our customer base and as well as tying into the electrical benefit and into short-term and the long-term reliability of the electrical system. So we're actually integrating all our programs with the, the electrical side, the wholesale side, and the customer side. Um, and so we're uh, focusing my budget in that direction. Mr. Chairman, I have a quick question, if I may. Please, go ahead. <coughs> Is, that, is there an increase in the efforts in this direction on helping commercial co customers? Yeah, we're, we're uh, definitely um, increasing our personnel. Um, and we're working on uh, economic development programs to work with our municipals that we serve in Wilmington, North Reading, Reading, and, and portions of Linfield to try to grow our kilowatt hour sales. Um, by being able to grow those sales, that allows us to have lower rates because we're able to. Uh, collect the revenue over a larger customer base um, and then as well as programs that we're working to develop in terms of um, demand response programs so that we can work with our customer base to manage that peak capacity as well as transmission demand on a going forward basis. Um, so we're actively... So, Thank you. I, I might be a little lost, but which, which line item is, are you referring to? Is there, is there a certain line item that... No, it's, it's basically the strategy that we're, that we're moving forward with, Dave. So there's no one particular line item. It's the direction that um, my group, along with the RMLD, is working uh, towards uh, in, in terms of programs, staffing, uh, and, and... Got it. Okay, so that's fine. The, the, the one quick follow-up is that, is there, do we have a um, understanding of what our... Um, fiber in infrastructure is to help us in that regard? That, that question came up last meeting. I was just curious if, if this is something that, you know, do, do, we, do we have enough communications infrastructure to do what you're talking about? Yeah, currently um, we're working, uh, Bill and I have been actively working uh, along with Hamid in the uh, uh, E&O group to uh, utilize an, an outside vendor in, in the lack of having active personnel within the department uh, to assist us in that. And so we will have definite communication capabilities uh, without utilizing any fiber. I see, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Soley. Uh, do you project load growth for next year? Uh, and if so, how much? Uh, we've actually projected a flat growth um, minus the economic development piece. Um, so it's, it's imperative that, um, you know, if we have a very hot summer, that will obviously contribute to, to the growth. Um, over the last five years, our, our growth has been flat to slightly decreasing. Um, so for us to put in an increase would probably be uh, aggressive, and we're taking a conservative approach, and we're really going to be focusing on that economic growth in, in order to assist us with our revenue requirements. Thank you. I, I noticed that um, there, uh, there was something from town hall as well talking about a meeting for economic growth or developing an economic growth uh, portfolio. Was that part of 
your initiative? I'm working with the town manager in Reading um, currently and hopefully to broaden that once we perhaps develop a team. Um, <laughs> there is an economic development team in Reading. Um, we're trying to structure a, a committee that focuses more on uh, larger commercial and, and how that integrates into the financial health and stability of the of the RMLD. Um, and you know it, it's going well, but it's not. Uh, it's just in its infancy right now. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we we want to make sure that we coordinate that with what the flexibility of the system has and the programs that Jane has up and running. So it's all timing as far as. Um, you know, it, it kind of has to move in parallel, I, su I suppose. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. You're welcome. The next division we'll be discussing will be the general manager. Just call me and we'll be considering. Okay, thank you. I'll do general manager, human resources, community relations, and the CAB and the board. Uh, with respect to the general manager's budget, um, we took a, it, and this it go, this goes along with some of the other division as well. The legal fees uh, were being categorized in such a way that um, didn't make a lot of sense. So I've reallocated those so that all legal fees that have to do with power supply will be under Jane. All legal fees that will have to do with employees and unions will be put under Human Resources. Uh, and all legal fees that may have to do with um, just general, um, like Chapter 164 questions, statutory would come under the general manager. So you might see a slight deviation in the fees. Um, it's not that human resources planning to spend more, it's just that it was properly allocated. Mm -hmm. I just want to make that note. As well, there's a part-time tech admin that will be going into um, integrated resources and planning to help with all of these programs moving forward. Uh, that other half was put into the general manager's budget and needed to be reallocated um, to community relations. It is our intent that community relations will be highly supporting integrated resources and planning so that we can have a much better um, effort to convey what we're doing to the public on a consistent and regular basis. Uh, just so that you understand what the miscellaneous is under general managers, I'd just like to tell you it's APPA, NEPA, and all of the um, industry-related dues. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as human resources is concerned, again, the reallocation of the legal fees, i just like to discuss the miscellaneous. Um, that has to do with the physicals, the drug and alcohol testing, job postings, uh, and the physicals for, um, I mean, the new employees and want ads and that, uh, things of that nature. Um, under community relationships, the supplies in general had to do with the public power open house uh, along with the rotary and, and chamber um, uh, dues. Uh, the CAB is, is a budget that's based on the 20-year plan, has to do with travel training um, and consultants, uh, and that figure was adjusted slightly back down to 15,000. I think that was a typo or something that was caught and Bob had um, spoke of that. Other than that, there are no major uh, drivers on any of those budgets. I noticed that you slashed the, uh, the board budget. I commend you for that and gave that to the CAV. <laughs> <laughs> is the, uh, what's appropriated for the CAB, is that in compliance with the 20-year agreement? Because there is a set amount under the 20-year agreement of which they are, to, they are to have each year. Yeah, this is, there was a typo, and this is in accordance with the plan. Right. Yeah, there's uh, 20 adjustments on draft journal and you hear there's a $45 adjustment when that first two on the CAV. They get them back to the 15,000 level where they need to be. There's okay. The right. Details on that. It's the last okay. page of that sheet. I get it. I apologize for being late, but traffic is traffic. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, Dave Paulson, uh, facilities mm -hmm. managers. Uh, Good evening. Good evening. The, uh, uh, my name is David Polson, facilities manager. <coughs> so I have uh, responsibility for four budgets. Uh, I just want to go over the, uh, the budgets individually. Um, the general benefits budget, there's, uh, um, there's some main drivers in there for pension increases. Um, OPED post employment benefits and health care are the main drivers of, uh, of the general benefits. The transportation, uh, responsible for all the fleet. Uh, the fleet 
um, you'll see that there's uh, no amount in there only because that money is allocated to the different uh, operating groups, but that budget is uh, level funded. There's no changes in, in the transportation. Um, we are, you know, we have um, developed an eight to 10 year um, plan for vehicle replacement, and we're looking at that. It's uh, in line with industry standards and other utility companies for line trucks, the large, large vehicles. So we're, uh, we're moving forward with that. Uh, building maintenance, that's for all our grounds, outside and interior uh, building maintenance for all our facilities. Um, there's uh, really no, no significant change there. Uh, we have looked at um, opportunities to, uh, to make some changes so that we've reduced some of our costs. So there's a positive story on that. Uh, materials management, materials management is uh, responsible for all the uh, warehousing and uh, some insurances. And um, that is, uh, there's no change in that, no major change. Any uh, any questions on on the uh, the budgets? I don't believe so. Okay, thank you, Dave. Thank you. The next budget to be presented is the business division, which will be done by yours truly. The business division is basically responsible uh, for for the, for the admin section, also for the internal and external customers. Uh, there are really no major changes anticipated in FY15 from what we have currently in place, except for some of the obligations that are required uh, through agreements that uh, need, need to be uh, in effect. But other than that, that uh, the four departments that, comp that comprise the business division, uh, except for normal increases, uh, there really is no major significant changes happening this year. Uh, in the business division. Any comments or observations uh, from the board? What's the depreciation rate on three percent? Three percent. Great, thank you, Bob. The last uh, uh, budget we're going to be doing is engineering and operation. If you look at that uh, handout that I gave you, the, the middle page, it says page seven. When you look at your books, you're going to see uh, the left and the right side is the same. But if you just uh, insert that page seven uh, that begins that says tech service department, and that should uh, uh, finish the uh, engineering and operations division budget. Hamid. Yes. Good evening. I'm Hamid Jafari, director of engineering and operations. I'm in charge of uh, engineering, op line operations, technical services and facilities. Uh, the main drivers basically for my budget, my op operating expenses are uh, education, preventative maintenance program, tree trimming, metering, street lights, outside services, uh, labor and supplies. And the education, the main driver, uh, as you know, Colin and I, we are preparing the CDP career development plan for the employees. Uh, so to res in response to their needs, the skills, and the training that they need in order to do to their job more effectively and efficiently. Uh, training program for the uh, substation technical services for engineers and in the area, the SCADA, MILSOFT, which is engineering model, uh, the code, electrical code, and outage management systems. Uh, we also uh, send engineers and staff to a number of conferences like APPA and NEPA to be aware of the I industry changes, as well as the ECNI, which I'm a member, a teacher at the ECNI, teaching the technical courses for uh, engineers in the industry, and the GIS uh, overhaul, basically. Uh, you're gonna know, I, I'd like to make a note that GIS is a platform or foundation for uh, building a, a solid engineering load flow model. And that is the driver for uh, preparing or developing a number of preventative maintenance programs, such as transformer load management, which means uh, we, uh, we replace the transformers early on before they uh, fail, the age transform. Uh, then uh, another driver, as I explained, uh, is the preventative maintenance program, which includes hazardous waste, transformer disposal, pole inspection, and uh, maintenance of the aged overhead and underground facilities, which we are replacing the uh, aged facilities in a number of 
uh, URDs or uh, the development throughout all communities. Um, uh, also replacing the porcelain cutouts, uh, the infrared scan of the distribution systems and substations, and as well as the substation vegetation. Uh, for tree trimming, which is another driver for the expenses, we are revamping the cyclic tree trimming program. Uh, again, uh, once we have the engineering load flow model, that would indicate us the areas that, you know, we have had problems in the past, as well as, you know, the reliability indices. And then we're going to have to uh, alter the program uh, to respond the needs to the area that, you know, we need to uh, make changes. <coughs> Metering is another area that, you know, for meter calibration tools and testing meters, we have uh, expenditures, as you could see on pages six and seven. Uh, street light maintenance, the outside services include the NERC compliance uh, cons uh, consultant. That we, as you know, those uh, uh, standards that are uh, in keep getting increased. Uh, the BES is another one, bulk electric uh, supply is another standard that it's coming, it's right around the corner, and we're getting ready to <coughs> be in compliance with that. Uh, another driver for uh, the my budget is the labor, uh, which we're hiring the two technical services in order to form officially our technical services group so they can perf perform testing at the substations and we can maintain our sub substations to make sure the source, because the reliability starts with the source. We're going to make sure our source uh, uh, is reliable for station three, station four, and station five. Also, one engineer slash GIS in order to maintain the GIS model. As you know, our GIS model is being right now, we're trying to uh, bring it up to date and uh, make uh, bring the data and compile the data uh, the uh, assistance of consultants and one assistant foreman which is uh, another labor that you know has part of the career development and also the succession planning that Colleen started uh, we, uh, we are uh, gonna have that we're gonna hire that person uh, the next driver for my budget is supplies which includes uh, fire retarded clothing substation testing and this is a big ticket item, $150,000, that we're going to spend in order to test all the devices at the substations, including transformers, breakers, the relays. So we have a um, demarcation for moving forward uh, to start our cyclic three years, three to five years uh, maintenance program testing to make sure, again, the substations are reliable. Do you test those once per year or once every three years? I mean, what is the cycle? Uh, for the breakers and uh, for the breakers and the relays, that w uh, every two to three years. Breakers are three years. Transformers, I like to test them every three years, but you can test them up to you know every five years. I see. Some utilities they go five years. Some utilities they go three years. But in general, transformers and breakers every three years. Relays also you can do three years. However, I like to do them every two years for the reason that, you know, these re relays, they haven't been tested for so long, so uh, we don't right. know what the status is and until we gain conf confidence that they're doing their job. And then we're going to go to the three-year cyclic program. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, also, uh, developing the cyclic uh, um, uh, vegetation management and uh, also the labor that uh, applies to those uh, for the supply section. Uh, that concludes my presentation for the budget for the spending. Uh, I had just had a question in terms of uh, training. Uh, is, is does the training you described also include training for eventually doing the underground ourselves as opposed to using outside? services yes right the the train do you want to okay the training the technical services we're going to be starting off with um, UPG is going to come in and actually do a baseline assessment and testing uh, which we're going to double as training uh, for our employees mm -hmm. um, to get us off the ground and as Hamid says to get a, a baseline of where our equipment is so that we can come up with a cyclic maintenance program uh, same would be for the underground uh, currently, Fishback and Moore is here, and we are having, uh, we have three different um, 
vendors that sell cable, that we buy cable from, that are coming in um, for free and going to be providing us from some extensive underground training for our employees. With that, they will go at Fishback and more until the end of that contract. So we'll be able to double up on not only the underground work, but also get a training aspect out of it as well. Um, so it will be a reduction in, in expenses at the end of the day, but until that contract is over uh, and until the first line of maintenance is done, um, we get over those humps, then you'll start to see a decrease in the expenses. And that contract is, what, for a year or uh, the, with the Fishback um, and more? Fishback and more, I believe, goes to the end of 2016 or 15. I in believe in the end of 15, yes. 15. Okay. Right. And Great. the UPG for the maintenance is going to be a three month. Three to four months. Three to four starting months to do. May 27th. Right. To do all of the, um, and we'll have a baseline to put into our program and uh, we're off and running from there. Great. Okay. Thank We've you. already developed the maintenance uh, uh, software that uh, automatically is going to tell us when it's their due, the next due date. Right. We did so that in-house. Yeah, so that did was that in-house. Station 3, 4, and 5. So we're just waiting for the data to be compiled. And once the data is entered, then <coughs> it's going to tell us when the next due date would be for testing the d each device. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cheney, do you have questions? Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, just a question in general on the education development. Can you? Give us a feel of how much is instructor-led versus online, and then maybe how much is done in-house versus, you know, outsourced. So mostly the, these trainings are going to be done outside. Some of the in-house training that we can provide, like um, I can provide them myself, mm -hmm. as well as Colleen. Uh, we got the people in-house that they could do some of the uh, stuff. Like, for instance, Millsoft training, although the initial training is going to be done by uh, by the vendor itself, then you know the subsequent training uh, for engineers, I can do them. Uh, wouldn't be a problem. Uh, some of the courses that I teach at ECNI, uh, because I'm affiliated, we are affiliated with ECNI. They're going to get a special discount that you know they can come to those classes. Sure, I'll be more than happy to run those classes separately if uh, Colleen would like us to do. Uh, however, they're not going to cost much because we're getting a substantial discount for being a member and um, us teaching it. And what so about online? Does, is there much training available online? For There are some training. My uh, experience with the, uh, you know, it online uh, teaching and online learning is that, you know, well, because of the technical courses, you need a live interaction with the instructor and also with the class. It would be better learning if it's in a class set environment as opposed to re remote. However, it is possible for, you know, remote. We try to do some of those for refreshers because the people, once they get the basic understanding and knowledge of the subject the first time around in the classroom environment, then you can do refresher uh, on online or remotely from, you know, Thank conferences. You. Good question. Any other comments? Thank you, Amin. Thank you. So I said at the outset, uh, there would be a draft two. Um, I believe what the draft two is going to show is approximately a $100,000 increase in net income from uh, draft one from $2.5 million to $2,652,997. Uh, the CAB did take a vote. Uh, and made a uh, recommendation that that net income figure be accepted uh, for the FY15 operating budget. Uh, and they did vote 5-0 uh, on that. So that's where, that's where we're at right now. Great. Is Mark here for a Did he get, free, did he get Mark will be here part of the capital budget. He's part of the capital. Okay. I saw him get up there a few minutes. I thought he was coming <laughs> forward. <laughs> <laughs> when Hamid got up. <laughs> 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 Great, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Sully. Um, <coughs> you have this 2.65 million, and I'm trying to correlate it to the 5.8. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> thank you, Mark. <laughs> Too much paper. We uh, 
have. Going to commence the cap. Please, let's okay. let's do, do that. You want to yeah. vote? We could vote on the opera, and I suppose right here. Okay. Cause it's where yeah, I mean, I, I have to leave at quarter of seven tonight. I had a client meeting that got rescheduled from last week to this week. So if, if we could vote on that, sure. I Do I have a motion to for approval of the? Uh, uh, I'll move that uh, we recommend the uh, <coughs> 2015 operating budget with an adjusted net income of two million six hundred fifty-two thousand nine hundred ninety-seven dollars, as presented. Can I get a second? Second. Second. I'll second. Thank you. Um, any comments? Yes, Commissioner Sol. I would like to amend it, and I'll I'll read the amendment. Hope I get a second, and then we can let maybe you can let me discuss it. Uh, that the non-fuel, that's a new word, FY15 operating budget with an adjusted net income of 2.65 million as it was be approved and that the fuel budget target a two and a half million dollar year end value with progress towards these goals be reported to the RMLB each month. Would you, uh, would you comment on that and explain <coughs> why? And somebody second. Oh, can I get a second? Well, let, let me, I'm not sure I understand the motion. The number I did not to change. Do, to be honest with you, I mean, yeah, I, I think I, it'd be appropriate to maybe explain the motion. It, yeah. yeah. What, okay. what, what, what's trying to be accomplished? The number here did not I change. Think. Okay. Um, in the spring, we got into trouble because the board couldn't see that the real bottom line was being missed, uh, as opposed to businesses, where they have one bottom line, we have two. One is we are allowed to make a profit. That's one bottom line. The other is the fuel charge we are allowed to pass through to the customers but not make any money. And this, but this motion mixes those two up. And they, we really should keep our eyes on two balls. One is, how are we doing towards the amount that's the 8%, taking out the fuel, and then how is the fuel doing towards meeting the reserve? So this is to provide more uh, visibility and transparency yes. into what's, what it's it is. It and is. It's not depending on the, the uh, if I may, it's not depending on the, the budgeted numbers, but tracking it basically on a uh, month by month or a quarter by quarter each month basis we do get we do get the month we do get the numbers right but nobody has been subtracting out the fuel okay. to end Jane can you speak to this on the unbundling perhaps make a recommendation on that motion Um, my understanding, though, um, with the new cost of service and how we, uh, the, the department is going to be unbundling their rates so that the distribution charge will be separated with the power supply charges, which will include capacity, transmission, and fuel. I believe what Mr. the point that uh, Commissioner Soli is making is because uh, the way our rates are currently structured, uh, part of the power supply costs are embedded in the base rates which make it difficult to track, as he had said. Uh, I believe part of the cost of service uh, proposal and then the directive that the consultant is working on is to unbundle those uh, rates so that it, there will be much more transparency in terms of the, the power supply being a pass-through and then the 8% that the, that the board is talking about. Um, so I believe that that will help the board in terms of the financials um, and the transparency of the power supply skewing the overall. So that will accomplish the same yes. thing that Commissioner Soli is asking for? I believe so, yes. And, and if it doesn't, we can address it in terms of a, another motion um, at, a, at, a, at the next meeting or the, at, the, at the appropriate meeting to then further unbundle it so that we get an idea of what is happening. 
would that serve the purpose? Or let me ask it a different way. How difficult it is it to, because I don't understand how difficult it is to meet Commissioner Soley's um, motion? Is it merely a redistribution in the financials to basically reconstitute them? Or is it significantly more difficult to do the unbundling at this point in time? Chairman, can I also, so I want to make sure I understand it. So the amount isn't changing. So no. if we, we can approve the amount as originally uh, motioned. So it sounds like it's a reporting uh, displaying data yes. issue. Yes, that's which, how I read that. So which I, I would be in favor of just so it's good to have visibility on items that, you know, mm -hmm. aren't so easy to find. But so, but that could be accomplished even with a with a, an addendum or a summary to and re being reported monthly, which I also think is a good idea. Okay. But I'm not sure it changes the, the motion. We, we spoke to this issue, which is one of the objectives of unbundling. Right. When you unbundle, you're separating out all of power supply, including fuel, which are all pass-throughs. We, we don't make money on, on any of them. Right. So we're working towards unbundling to do that. Uh, we're we're going to have that as part of the cost of service presentation, and I believe the billing system is going to be able to handle that, correct? So we're working towards that objective. I'm not sure the purpose it serves in, in right at this very moment. We are working towards what Commissioner Soley had requested. Is that in the past, in the cost of service studies, the capacity in transmission we made money on and what might happen when a new new set of rates came out is the PPA that was on the bill then went into the base charge so now we could make money on it that's what I recall in the past. Yeah, I don't think we make money on it. Um, uh, I think what happens is it's it's a part of our revenue. Yeah. Um, but when you when you look at Bob's calculation in terms of what the department is able to earn a return on, that's our net plant, which comes out of the revenue. So we never make any money on capacity or transmission. We collect revenue through our rate structure, uh, and we're able to earn a return on our net plant. Um, does she speak um, the truth? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'd like to ta I'd like to table this to uh, an offline uh, discussion. Uh, I I I, I think, think it's probably a good idea. <laughs> I think we can accomplish exactly what Bob's request is through a reporting mechanism. Yes. And I think unbundling the weights will accomplish that, and that's scheduled to be implemented for the next for this fiscal year. So uh, I don't think that where there's a disconnect. Um, but that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Could I ask you to withdraw your motion for this meeting and move to table it until we have a chance to see whether the reporting can accomplish the same mechanism? We have two balls that we should keep our eyes on. <laughs> <laughs> There's no disagreement. <laughs> and previously, we only kept our eye on one, and it got <laughs> us in trouble. Um, Okay. What I, what, you know, my comment would be, I, I, I don't know if I fully understand what you're trying to accomplish, Bob, and I apologize that I, my I, mind is a little either. bit blown and up a little bit. <laughs> um, I, I, I feel that we should, we yeah. should and look what at this it, and yeah. consider it, absolutely, but right. I think it, right at this moment, I don't quite understand it either. Right, but so what, I, I, what I would like to do is we vote on the budget, and then, you know, we, we instruct the department to take a look at this and report back to us at the next meeting. Uh, with with the specifically on what you're getting a better understanding and I think I need to get a better understanding also That's fine. as to what this is trying to do. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So, okay. All right. Good. Very good. We can get a second. So. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go back to the original um, motion. Uh, if everyone is in favor, we have to take a roll call vote because we have a remote. Yep. So uh, if I could see a show of hands for approval. Aye. Aye. It's Racino Aye. My right hand is in the Aye. air. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we have a unanimous uh, vote, if it could be recorded, please, yeah. for approval of the operating budget. Very good. Thank you.
Okay, I believe we can move on to the Capitol. Budget. Excellent, thank you. The RMLD staff has done an excellent job generating the new capital outlay, outlay which now includes, similar to the operating budget, a six-year plan. While we are here tonight to focus on FY15. I don't mean to interrupt you. Can I, just, can I just make one comment? Yes. yes and and it's, it's one of my pet peeves again. I noticed we got the sheet with all the months again. I thought we were going to eliminate that this year <laughs> on the budget. That's why I only, uh, only dealt with the summary section. And I, I, I okay. said at the beginning that that piece of this for reference is internal use only. Uh, it was never discussed or brought up. Okay. I hear you, Phil. I think we could save some paper, save a few trees. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That's I'm sorry. I apologize. Fine, no <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, similar to the operating budget and a six-year plan. We're here tonight to focus on FY15, and we have provided you where we expect to land at the end of FY14, what we have scheduled for FY15, and then what we are planned for FY16 through 19. Uh, new focus items um, that were mentioned previously include the GIS, which is the mapping system that produces a geographically correct map of our system assets. Uh, the GIS, as Hamid said, is the basis for our engineering modeling software and works to determine the accuracy of our system coordination and protection as well as our future reliability planning. Uh, addressing capacity and flexibility to meet the challenges of the future, including areas that we may be able to um, get additional kilowatt hour sales. The second area we discussed previously is the lack of system maintenance. We're developing a predictive asset management system that would tie into the GIS and service as a basis for assessing the current condition of our assets with the appropriate data loaded will support predictive maintenance. To extend the life of our equipment and schedule replacements prior to any equipment failure. The LED street light conversion uh, of which the pilot um, report is completed and you will all be getting a copy of that this week inclu includes converting approximately 8,000 lights at less than uh, $3 million uh, for a significant energy savings to each of the towns and a decrease in maintenance. Engineering is finalizing that pilot, which we just finished uh, yesterday, which targets, targets the areas for the pilot light placements within each town. Jane, myself, the project engineer, Brian Smith, are meeting with each of the town managers along with the cab representatives for each town to go over the pilot. The street light rate is being produced and will be presented at the cost of service presentation. Uh, which you've all received a schedule for. Um, inventory is now being stocked with LEDs. We will no longer carry the conventional lights and the towns will be credited for any lights that we replace. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, in the far left-hand column on your um, capital outlay, uh, you now see that it's a six-year plan. This handy-dandy uh, Spreadsheet on the far left-hand uh, column, the F stands for facilities, <laughs> M for um, MIS or IT, and S for anything that has to do with the system. Um, on the right-hand side is a tickler, which kind of explains to you what the, uh, you know, what the objective of the project is. And on the second page, you'll see that we um, put in the funding schedule for the plant depreciation. Uh, so between this, uh, you, we, we are able to, so some of the items that you see beyond FY15 doesn't necessarily mean we're going to spend that money, but they're placeholders so that we, we're taking a conservative approach. We want to make sure that we have the funding so that we're, I, My sheet doesn't fold out in terms Your of, sheet I don't doesn't we have extra. That's a real one right here. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I wondered about that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, do you see if this, so yep. on the second page you have your depreciation fund. Um, yep. yes. That's a great little table as well because it'll tell you what the starting amount is, what we're looking for, any type of force accounts we might get um, state uh, reimbursements, uh, any bonding or anything like that, uh, and where we, where we land. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the F group, which is facilities, um, and we'll go through the highlights. We're not going to talk a lot about projects that have already been discussed in the past that are multi-year. We're going to focus on any real changes for FY15.
previous year, this just reflects um, the plan out over a, a period of uh, two years. The, uh, the master site plan, um, very similar. That was uh, approved last year, and what that does, it does it puts a placeholder in for fiscal year 16 and 17 for anticipated work that will be the result of the master site plan. Um, station one uh, project rehabilitation, that, uh, that project was planned, but what, um, that will be part of the overall site plan, and, and it was uh, moved out as part of the facilities master plan outcome and the best use of uh, the buildings. You know, we just want to make sure that that um, that we're lining up the the facility here with our organizational plan, long-term strategic plan, use of the building, um, evaluate the lease space as we talked about before. So we're really trying to integrate all the efforts that are going that go, we're going through right now uh, for a long-term plan, and uh, that's why we we uh, shifted out the um, station one rehabilitation, um, the covered storage, same situation. Uh, that falls under the site plan as well. Uh, oil containment, that's uh, new, and the oil containment is just, um, you know, we have a consultant looking at our uh, facilities right now. We are in compliance. We have an SPCC plan um, that we, uh, that's like, you know, um, evaluated all the facilities, and we're just evaluating to see if there's any opportunities to uh, mitigate any potential risk we have. Um, there are no issues. We're in compliance, but I think it's just prudent to uh, move forward with this. So th we'll be doing some studies this year and some uh, work next year. Uh, security upgrades, we just want to make sure that we're uh, uh, compliant with NERC and FERC requirements at our substations. We are constantly trying to make improvements in our security at this facility and at our other facilities. So over the next few years, we'll be uh, adding some security at uh, some of our substations as well. That's what this capital item is for. Um, rolling stock, we have um, developed a 10-year plan um, and, and this really this uh, looks out until 2019 on all our vehicles to uh, to make sure that we're levelizing our vehicle replacement. We're reducing our maintenance costs on our fleet, and um, you know that's a, that's a, a long-term plan that we have. So uh, that's it. If there are any questions, is the rolling stock getting more reliable, or is it? pretty much no, <laughs> it is what it is you know the the, the rolling stock we've uh, reduced some of our stock yes on our trucks um, we've reduced some of our trailers we've reduced some vehicles we're evaluating our vehicles constantly um, you know reducing our fleet that's our, our goal we do want to make sure that we have enough vehicles to address situations we have um, severe weather right we want to make sure that our vehicles are uh, operating correctly you know we have a very good history right now of our vehicles up and running during critical times as well so we have a good maintenance program on our vehicles, and uh, you know, but we, we still look for opportunities to try to reduce our fleet costs, and that will be part of the organizational study as well to evaluate that. Great, thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Hi. I have, uh, there's three items this year. Um, the two we always have, the uh, hardware and software uh, that encompass different things. So um, the, the first one is labeled 19. Uh, this is the Great Plains um, Cogsdale update. We're updating our, um, our back office financial and customer service management software. It's about 10 years old. It's <coughs> ending its life cycle. Um, so we're doing a, a conversion slash migration. This is going to take up probably the rest the rest of calendar year 2014. Could go into 2015 a little bit, um, but the target date is to get it done this year. Um, it's a big project personnel wise because it really touches everybody. There's a lot of training, um, a, a ton of testing involved. Um, so that's the, the the major one for me this year. And then we always have the hardware and um, software upgrades, licensing. This year, the hardware um, uh, line item, for the most part, encompasses, we're turning everything into virtual machines. We're just about done, but we've got a few left to, to virtualize all our servers. And the related software and backup software and uh, storage area networks and uh, replication software that goes with it. And on the software, pure software side, we always put money aside for custom programming, um, 
to try to uh, build up the integration between outage management, um, GIS, uh, utility authorization number management system, um, and other specific software, again, for uh, backup and replication of virtual machines and related systems. But the GP Cogsdale, uh, Great Plains Cogsdale, is, is the biggie this year. Have, have they uh, been any issues relative to this new virus, this heart bleed bug virus? Um, or? It's, it's a widespread um, issue, if you will. Be people use open source software for SSL to secure socket layer connections. So it affected roughly, they feel, two-thirds of all secure websites. We haven't run into it yet. The biggies, the Microsofts, the Googles. Uh, we use Microsoft Office 365. Um, a lot of the major banks um, it, it already patched it, but it obviously caught a lot of people by surprise. I don't think anybody knows what the fallout is or going to be, right. but it seems to be minimal at this point, to the best of my knowledge. So, Great. Thank you. Question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, so uh, on the soft customer service software update, what's the expected go live date, and uh, the, is there much of a potential impact to customer service when that happens? Um, uh, to answer the first part, uh, the go live date is the third week, second or third week of December. That's loose at this point. We certainly want to do it by the end of the year, but again, it is a major undertaking. It's mostly training, and again, you have to do extensive testing. There's so many things that it touches, from metering to service orders to credit and collections, um, your receivables, um, the bill itself. Uh, we'll be changing the format of the bill, going, you know, the unbundling portion. Is just one aspect uh, of change. Um, so there's a ton of testing. Um, is it a hard? It's a hard cut. You don't you don't run parallel systems. You here? you run parallel for certain things. It's all, it's very very difficult to run parallel and everything. You almost create more work and more confusion by trying to tie everything out, if you will. the The bottom line is make sure your receivables bill for bill ties out. That's really the main thing. Where if I produce a bill on the current system with all things being equal, is that bill going to look the same, bottom line, on, the, on the, the new system? So that's really what you test. There's adjunct systems to it, such as the metering that has to, to be tested. But to run true parallel, it, it's a major undertaking. We just don't have the people, the bodies to do it. And sometimes you have to weigh whether it's, it's worth agree. it or not. But we've, I've been through a few of these before. Uh, we do have a, a, a process, a procedure. And as far as the impact to customer service, um, our customers, it, it's minimal to none, to none. So uh, in the perfect world, they won't even notice the difference, and that's what happened last time. So we're hoping for that this Good. time. Great. Yep. Thank you very much. The capital imp uh, authorization uh, improvement op authorization projects for uh, my section. I'm going to start with uh, project number 108, the relay replacement for station 4 Gaul substation. Uh, that uh, currently at the Gaul substation we have electromechanical relays uh, that we are not capable of bringing analog data through the RTU back to the SCADA and uh, only one phase. Uh, in order to be enhance the capability and use the full cap capacity of the uh, SCADA system, what we need to do, ne we need to replace them with the solid state relays mm -hmm. so we can bring more uh, power quality data back, especially power factor and uh, the harmonics. This is something that we need to watch, especially for the commercial <coughs> industrial customers to make sure we mm, provide clean power to the rest of the customers. Uh, project number 130, that's uh, RTU replacement at station 3. Actually, there are two RTU replacements, one is station 3, one is station 5. Station 5 is going to be done uh, by June, uh, end of June, or early m maybe mid-July uh, uh, of 2014. Station 3, it's going to be done in FY uh, 2015. And again, the RTU, the current RTU is not capable of providing all the data such as voltage, current, and you know uh, the power factor and harmonics. 
by upgrading that, that's going to be uh, an upgrading the SCADA system. Now they're going to be synced in and we can bring more data back uh, for engineering and analysis. Uh, project number one, uh, one, uh, 122, that's engineering analysis software and data conversion. Engineering analysis and project 122, 125, they go hand in hand. As I explained, GIS is a platform for engineering models. Once we have the data in the GIS database completed and we bring the model up to date, then that data is going to be converted and it's going to be transferred into the engineering model, MILSOFT, and then we're going to have the uh, up-to-date uh, load flow model that we can perform all sort of engineering analysis, uh, same as what the consultants they do in order to make uh, recommendations for preventative maintenance. Mm, a project, uh, uh, the, uh, page 42, the next project is force account for on West Street. Uh, this is the project that uh, it's uh, going to be done per uh, state, requir uh, state uh, request. Uh, and uh, that's going to be done in FY 2015. Uh, they widen up the road. Uh, the next project is pole line upgrade on Lowell Street in Wilmington. There is a, we, we need to bring that area, that's an old section of the, the old construction. We need to bring it up to code. Therefore, we're going to have to upgrade all the poles and upgrade the wires and uh, then multiple circuits on those pole lines that there are two close to one another and then we're going to have to bring it up to code in, uh, and, and uh, you know in up to national uh, electric safety code question on the west street project uh, the next project no, do we have a question question sure. on the west street yeah. project where are they going to widen west street yeah, i wonder what where are they going to actually widen that road do you know that's that's close to uh, 93 uh, uh, highway 93 uh, I know they're digging that road up now. Th toward, toward the end of the uh, 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 west of the street. Lovely. It's a two-year project. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize Not it just to widen it, but uh, yeah. first, first they're doing the gas. Right. 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 Yeah. I didn't realize it was two a two-year project. Two years later, it'll, it'll be done. <laughs> it, the good news Maybe. is it's reduced traffic on Western. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's very bumpy. <laughs> you have a tank, very John. bumpy. It's very <laughs> bumpy, that road, I have to admit. I kind of like that all the <laughs> police officers there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. The next project is distribution protection and automation. Uh, we are, uh, once we have the working load flow model, then we're going to be uh, start thinking about the and also the reliability study, 20-year plan, uh, planning study that we're going to be doing, Colin and I will be doing. Uh, that's going to provide us a roadmap for our automation. That's the next step to, in order to further sectionalize the circuits. So in case there's a fault at the end of the circuit, it won't go back all the way to the source. And we can you know, minimize the outages. And also probably some level of automation once we have the full scheme. But you have to have a roadmap because that's very tricky. You need to plan it well ahead of time, maybe 10 years, 15 years ahead of time, which direction you go with the automation in order to get it done right. So and that's in, in the works. Uh, the next project is a SCADA upgrade, a SCADA system. The software is upgraded for free. That's surveillance software, which is good. They're also going to provide us the uh, outage management system upgrade for free. However, for installation and training, there are co some costs involved. I believe it's about $60,000, uh, which is very well worth it. That means once the SCADA system is brought up to date with the RTUs at the substations, now we have the full capability of bringing data back for uh, engineering analysis along with the MILSOFT model, which is going to enhance the capability of the engineers in order to do all sort of engineering analysis. Uh, the next project is the LED street lights, which uh, the pilot area, which uh, Colleen uh, explained. Uh, that's going to be in, uh, we have the four areas to pick in every town. Uh, you in, in one is each town, which we're going to have these lights, 80 lights. And then subsequently, in the uh, following years, uh, FY 16, 17, and 18, we're going to be spending close to 1.2 in each year in order to replace all these street lights with the LED efficient lights. That's going to have, that's going to bring some substantial savings for the town. Uh, the audit management software, I already explained, that's the next project, which is uh, going hand in hand with the SCADA system upgrade. Uh, the next one is the predictive 
asset management programs. This is a number of uh, uh, predicted programs. The once we have the working model again, then we can uh, uh, create these uh, or develop these uh, programs in order to uh, protect our assets. The next one is the substation <laughs> test equipment. Uh, as we are forming our technical services group, uh, so they can test the substations, we need to provide them with the testing equipment. Uh, one of the testing devices we purchasing is the CPC 100 Om Omicron, which is capable of doing all sort of testing. But right now, uh, we have to rely on UPG. And once we train them, we're gonna take that ownership and we're gonna do the 13.8 kV uh, uh, testing from A to Z, the transformers and uh, the breakers. However, for some 35 kV uh, stuff devices and 115 kV, uh, we're still gonna have to rely on outside services like UPG because it requires specific equipment that are very expensive and uh, uh, I think it would be beyond the scope of uh, mm -hmm. the separate training it requires. Sure. Uh, the next project is the arc flash st study. This is also another requirement uh, that you know we need to meet, and uh, the study is going to be done. Uh, hopefully, as soon as the model uh, Millsoft model is completed, uh, then followed uh, by that at first GIS, then Millsoft model, and then followed by arc flash study uh, to see which area of town, which device we need to completely shut down whenever we do switching or any maintenance we want to perform uh, so we can uh, perform the work safely and you know for the safety of the public and also the employees are working with those uh, the next project is the organizational and reliability study that's what colin and i we are we send the rfp out to hire consultants in order to uh, provide us a road map for the next 20 years uh, that outlined with the priority what we need to and how we need to allocate the money and the spending in order to make sure we're going in the right direction uh, with the with plan, uh, having a plan uh, in, in place. Uh, the next project is, uh, I believe that's, a, that's the last one. The rest of them, they're continuing projects that they've been, uh, uh, they have started in previous years, FY13 through, and they're continuing through FY19. Uh, so uh, that would conclude basically the highlights of uh, job authorization or capital improvement projects for my section. Any comments or uh, questions? Please, Commissioner Soli. I was a board rep at the CAB meeting, and I wrote down a few, n few notes that you know, may be of, of interest. Uh, <coughs> While it looks like for next year the depreciation would be at 3%, uh, the general manager said that at some time in the future it might be necessary to fund this plan to increase depreciation to 5%. Uh, That's because of the um, lifetime of software and other sorts of of things so is it's is a way to get yeah, money. Reached, yes. No, it's, it's we're good for cash flow, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Can I speak to that? Please, go ahead. Um, again, what's in here beyond FY15 is, is placeholders. Um, it does show that we w one way of doing it, the DPU allows you to increase your depreciation up to 5%. You have to file. Um, but it's targeting areas like uh, the facilities. You know, if we're looking at the efficiency use of all of our facilities, and we would spend a certain amount of money maybe to renovate because we're supposed to renovate um, the architectural building next door or whatever we're going to do in that, along with the LED street lights. Um, we're ramping up to five and then back down to three. Um, it's, it's as opposed to bonding. There's a number of other financials. Uh, we could do a great job with economic development and get a, a lot more customers. Um, so again, this is just to uh, to show the funding and so that I'm not showing a budget or anything in the future that isn't being covered by some kind of um, fi financial creativity here. But it's, it's short-lived. It, it goes up and then yeah. comes back down. Yeah. Thank you. Um, wi within the capital budget, 
between large bids and that are probably pretty well thought out, but we don't know what escalation is. And these are prosperous times. And other things that are, that look to be just placeholders, there's about a million dollars in here of what seem to be somewhat or maybe quite iffy. And I asked if uh, we could get a report of how, how the, uh, the plan is fleshing out as the bids are coming in. And the department agreed it as we could get them. Hmm. Okay. But there's a lot of placeholders. Th there are, and the impression I get, though, is that we're, the placeholders are there because we're doing things new and differently. Oh, yeah, good and stuff. And you know, right, we're, we're setting that foundation for the future, and it's hard, sometimes very difficult to see into the future until you have the foundation in place and being able to do it. And, I'm, and clearly we're all about reliability yep. and, and lowering our cost wherever we can. Reliability, efficiency, and productivity. These yeah. are the three main reasons behind all this capital <coughs> and forecasting the capital improvement moving forward. And Wendy. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it, it's my intention to, part of the writing this up in a six year and having, uh, because prior to this budget, you never really saw what happened in FY14. Right. Do you know what I mean? So now I'm letting you know how we're doing with last year. So as soon as this gets approved and we get into FY15, then I'll give you a how we're doing in FY15 with each of the budgets. It would be just, you know, uh, what Hamid would go over quickly during our meetings. Um, well, certainly so having the visibility into the future years is, yeah. is the way it should be right. done. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's exactly we believe right. in the assessments that Hamid and I did on the system just from our expertise that we've captured the smoking guns and that we're addressing them. There could be a little bit of shifting when the reliability study actually comes in. Um, we did talk about at one of the meetings, uh, you know, the area of, um, of Wilmington where Target is while we are upgrading the Ballville area to, to Target. Um, we're probably looking at some kind of substation in that area. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for the consultant to, um, sure. we did not put a placeholder in for that, but there are other things that could come into this. And if there's any major changes, once that reliability presentation is made, we might want to go back and take a look at this. But we think we've captured what we need to in this year. And I think it gives you visibility. It, it enables discussion if they're not on the radar Absolutely. screen. You don't have a chance to talk about them. I, I did have one question, a curiosity. Uh, I had something like the GIS system and the systems area. So is there, is there much support or interface with uh, the uh, information technology group? Because a lot of if your areas have an, uh, heavy yes, IT Yes, actually component. you have a close coordination. Mm. And uh, I guess at the last meeting, uh, mentioned, uh, Mark and I, we provided a technology roadmap that I'll be more than happy to share that with you to see that, you know, how all these different technologies, they come together, and we have a roadmap for that, too. Yeah, that'd be interesting. That I couldn't make the last meeting. We can bring bring it all together, <laughs> so we are, so we are yeah, that's interesting. moving uh, coordinated to make sure that, you know, all the technologies are well managed. Good. It is, there is a one-line diagram. I gave that to the general manager, Colleen. She has that one line that she Because there's clearly a lot of over in every yeah, company. It, it operates on like a superhighway, like a service bus. So you have outage management, your metering, mm. your data, your, your SCADA. It all integrates in so that you, it can be managed and not one system can be right. down and affect everything else. So it, it can get complicated, but as long as you have a roadmap, and, and Mark's doing an excellent yeah. job, and you know, we're trying to tie it in the best we can as, they, as we are able to, to get more data. Yeah. That's Basically, great. there are three areas, the corporate uh, environment, there is a SCADA, real-time environment, and DMZ, which is the demilitarized zone, <laughs> which basically everybody, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if somebody wants to have an access, they need to have VPN and dedicated IP address. Right. And they have to, Mark is gonna have to provide them uh, 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 access to the firewall uh, so they can mm, only get the information that they need. <laughs> and we got an expert in house. You know, Mark is our expert, so he's been. That's great. Him and I, we've been working closely together uh, in order to develop the roadmap. More than, happy, more than happy to share it. Great, thank you. By all means, good. Did you have anything else, Bob? No. Okay. 
Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. took a bet of when we would be done and everybody's looking at each other about who's going to win. That's why I'm giggling. Oh, I see. So, so there's <laughs> money on this. <laughs> there's money being there. No, I, I, I thought Habib, Habib was next to win and, he, and I'm like, if he keeps talking, he's going <laughs> to be the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good. Uh, is there anything else that uh, we need to make comments on or recognize? So, let's see. Could I have a um, motion to approve the capital yeah. budget? Motion. Want to take a motion? Oh, oh you're about to take a motion. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, move to approve the FY15 capital budget dated March 28th, 2014. In the amount of five million eight hundred forty nine dollars, eight hundred forty nine thousand six hundred seventy three, as presented. Could I get a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any comments or discussion? If not, could I have a uh, roll call vote, please? All in favor? Please raise your right hand. Slowly, aye. Stempek, yes. Aye. Tom O'Rourke, aye. Yes. Mr. Talbot, yes. Okay, thank you very much. I believe that's the um, that's the end of our session. So, could I have a motion to adjourn? At six fifty-seven, I move to adjourn. <laughs> a second. Second. So moved.